Hello and welcome back to another throwing instructional video from The Art House. In this session I'm going to be running through how to throw narrow necked bottle forms on the wheel using one pound 450 grams of clay. Um, so I'll run through a step-by-step -step process of how to make those forms and I'll give uh, two or three different examples of styles you can make when you're throwing bottles as well. So without further ado, let's get started. So first up, we're just getting the clay centered. So the first few steps of this process will be the same as throwing a cylinder, but then it will start to differ slightly as we get a touch further on. So getting the clay centered, opening it up in the same way as we would a cylinder. So just working the clay down with that thumb to get that shallow V-shaped opening, aiming for about half a centimetre or so of clay in the base. So because bottles tend to be quite narrow necked, we don't want to be reliant on trimming them when they've stiffened up. So ideally they want to be thrown in such a way that the clay is as thin as we want it down here. Because they have a narrow neck, so they're narrow up at the top and they're wider down at the bottom, they're very difficult to invert and trim excess clay away from the base successfully. So having gone down to that half centimetre depth, we're going to open it out sideways. So just working flat through the clay to open out that base, running fingertips back and forth over the clay to flatten it out and compress it, closing it in with both hands on the outside as we would a cylinder. And then we're getting to the first lift. So this is where things are going to start differing because as we get towards the top of the lift, so as we get towards the rim here, we're going to ease off the pressure and leave the clay quite a bit thicker up at the top here, just because that gives us more to play around with when we come to shaping the neck. So crossing thumbs, two middle fingertips of each hand, lifting, and then by the time I'm getting to about this point here, I'm really easing off the pressure and leaving the clay much thicker up in this top corner here. So just to give you an idea of what you're aiming for, after that first pull, I'm gonna chop this piece in half just so we can see how that looks. So you can see from looking at this that we've really left it quite a lot thicker up here. So there is going to be more work to be done thinning and shaping what's going to become the body of the bottle down here. And then once we've got the body shaped how we want it, that's when we would then work up to this thicker portion of clay here, which we can then manipulate and thin out to form a narrow neck. So I'll just very quickly get us back to that stage and continue onwards from there. So we're back to this stage. So we're now working on thinning out the main body of the portion. So from about this line downwards, we're going to start off focusing on shaping and thinning the clay here. And then we're going to work on the neck once that's at a stage we're happy with. So the first bottle I'm going to make is going to have a slightly rounded outwards body. So at this stage, I'm going to start making that shape so just pushing outwards from the inside with my fingertips to begin. And then by the time we get to about here, I'm pulling back inwards. And again, really not applying much pressure at all by the time I get up here. But we're just starting to introduce that outwards curve on the body of the piece. One thing to be careful of is when we get to the stage that we start closing this neck here inwards, as this opening gets narrower, it's going to start exerting more outwards pressure on the body here. So you don't want to make this body too rounded and bulbous and curving outwards to begin with. 
because as this neck gets narrower, it's going to force it to get more rounded. So if you round out the body too much at this stage, you run the risk that when you start closing the neck in, the whole thing gets overly rounded and starts getting either quite dumpy and very bottom heavy down here, or worst case scenario, the whole thing gets so squeezed outwards that it just collapses down onto the wheel head. So because we're going to be aiming to not have to trim this bottle, I'm trying to get this bottom corner here thinned out as much as I want it to be so that it doesn't require a trim later. So I'm really just working into that corner, trying to thin it out to fairly close to that half centimetre thickness that we're aiming for. So the body is now suitably rounded out. I'm going to now start working on closing this rim in. So the first thing I'm going to do is make this shape with my hands. So I'm going to be using the index finger tip, this middle knuckle of my middle finger and my thumb tip. So these six points of contact are going to be touching the clay and just gently collaring it inwards and lifting upwards. So plenty of water on there. So middle knuckle of my middle finger are resting either side of the clay at about three and nine o'clock. Index fingertip resting on the clay on the far side. Thumb tip resting on the rim on the near side to me. And just gently squeezing inwards whilst coming upwards and off the rim. So this will take a few goes. So we're just very gently squeezing inwards and up and off the rim. The key is that you don't want to do too much of this in one go, or you can risk starting to distort the rim quite a bit. So as you close this rim back in on itself, the clay is going to start getting thicker. So we need to alternate this colouring inwards motion with lifting upwards. If it does start bellying outwards too much here, just a gentle squeeze with your palms inwards from the outside can help to just close it back in on itself. So again, coming up to the rim, just very gently squeezing and lifting. So repetition really is the key here. So after three or four collars in and then reaching inside, getting fairly far down into the body of the piece. So I've reached with my fingertips about halfway down the bottle and I'm just feeling my way through the clay, squeezing up and off the top. Again, just giving it a gentle squeeze in from the outside here and then continuing. So colouring in. So as this neck gets narrower, you'll find that you can fit less and less inside um, to work on that lifting. So by this point, I'm just using one fingertip inside. And as it gets narrower still, we may find that we need to use this body of the needle here to reach inside once we can no longer fit a fingertip in. Again, colouring, lifting, up and off the top. One thing that will happen as you collar inwards, because we're closing the clay back in on itself, it will magnify any slight unevenness or inconsistency in the clay. So it's quite common when you're colouring in to get the rim to start to wobble up and down like so. So colouring the clay inwards tends to go hand in hand with chopping the clay off at the top. So to do that, I'm just gonna rest a fingertip on the inside, needle very slowly and carefully coming in through the clay, lifting up and off, and that then leaves the rim nice and flat and even as we want it. 
So by this stage, the clay is getting to the point where it's all where we want it to be. So now it's a case of just refining the shape and getting it to something that we're happy with. So this is currently looking a bit sort of dumpy and the curves on the outside here aren't as nice as we would want them to be. So I'm just going to continue working with the clay to remedy that. So when it comes to collaring the neck in here, you really can take it as narrow as you want it to be. If you're planning on using the bottle for anything, so say as a, a flower bud vase, you do need to consider that you need to leave the opening wide enough that you can actually fit something into it. And do bear in mind that the piece will shrink as it dries and as it's fired. And if you're glazing the piece, the glaze will add additional thickness and cause this opening to close in more narrowly. So small alterations to the rim up here can make quite a large difference to the look and feel of the bottle. So either by continuing to close it in so that it tapers upwards to more of a teardrop shaped point can be one thing to go for, or flaring it outwards so just bringing the clay outwards as we get up to the top here can be another way to just change the appearance of the form. So you can go quite far with this. So I'm just starting down here pretty much at the base of the neck, squeezing inwards and then sort of scooping it upwards and outwards. So as you can see you can take that flaring outwards quite far. To accentuate it further you can close the main portion of the neck in more. So there is a lot of that flexibility to the clay in terms of how you can shape it at this stage. Finishing touches, I'm just going to run the wooden rib over the outside. So just cleaning off all of that wet sludge. And this is the stage of which as well, I'm just going to very gently push into the clay slightly if I can see any slightly lacklustre curves. So that looks okay to me. And finally, because we're going to aim not to trim this, so as you can see now that it's formed, it wouldn't be ideal to have this upturned on the wheel resting on this small rim here if we were trying to remove any excess clay from this corner here. So I've already thrown it fairly thinly down here, but just to remove a bit more of that excess weight, I'm just going to use this trimming tool just to work into that corner and just really ensure that the piece is nice and light and doesn't feel at all chunky or clunky once it's in use. So getting the bottle off the wheel, I've got my tail with a square of newspaper on it, just resting somewhere close to me. Slowing the wheel right down, cleaning my string off. Slowly and firmly chopping through the base. Scrape my hands off to get them as clean as possible. One nice thing about bottles is that they do tend to be quite easy to get off the wheel because they're quite narrow up here, the whole piece has quite a lot of kind of structural strength. Uh, so you can handle these fairly easily without them risking distorting too much. So that's bottle number one.
starting again now and I'm just going to run through a couple more examples of different shapes of bottle that you can go for. So whilst that first bottle was quite rounded and bellied out, this second bottle I'm going to go for more of a linear, tall, narrow effect. So I've left the clay thicker up in this top third. I'm not going to be pushing outwards and curving this body outwards this time. It's going to be more of a tall, narrow, cylindrical form. but because the bottle is going to have a narrow neck, we still don't want to have any excess clay in that body. So these first steps, I am just working on thinning that base, thinning that bottom corner, and thinning those walls out to a suitable thickness. So the body is now suitably thinned out, so I'm gonna start focusing on the rim. So again, just using these six points of contact to draw that in on itself. Making sure there's no drag by wetting it, taking your time with it. Again, it's less about the pressure and more about this repetition of the squeezing in whilst moving upwards motion. And now that that's suitably narrowed off, getting inside, squeezing and lifting. And then as before, it's just a case of alternating this colouring inwards motion with squeezing and lifting upwards. So at this stage I've got the clay more or less where I want it, so now it's down to that fine-tuning stage again. So just quite sensitively working over the surface of the clay with my fingertips, just trying to feel out for any inconsistencies, any lumps or wobbles, and just taking a look at the piece from a few angles just to check that I'm happy with the overall shape of it. And then same again, just using the wooden rib to clean the surface off. So all of this sludge here is going to make the bottle much more difficult to get off the wheel uh, because all of this is just going to cause our hands to slip over the surface. So that's one of the purposes of running the rib over the clay. and just gently nudging it into shape is another thing to do at this stage. And as before, just using my trimming tool here to take a bit of that excess away from the bottom corner there. So there you have a slightly different take on a bottle. Again, just making sure my hands are nice and clean. Cupping and lifting up and off. And the third variety of bottle that I'm gonna show is something a bit more angular and straight-sided, which is going to involve more use of the wooden rib. So just bringing the walls of the cylinder up vertically, as before, leaving excess thickness in this top inch or so, keeping that rim narrowed off. So by this stage, before I draw the rim in, I'm going to grab my wooden rib. I'm going to use this flat edge here to just form 
a vertical side on the body. So just running my fingers up the inside, making sure it's even and as thin as I want it to be. So this point here, roughly, is going to form the top corner of the body of the piece. And then colouring that rim in. So then using the wooden rib at more of a flat angle and just drawing the clay inwards and upwards. So my fingertips on the inside are working inwards and upwards towards the rim. And the wooden rib on the outside is just being used as a flat angular surface against which to work. So the corner of the rib here is now forming the break between the neck and this angled top portion of the body. So in addition to shaping with the wooden rib, we're going to continue squeezing, lifting, thinning the clay out and alternating that with using the wooden rib on the outside. And there we have something just a bit more angular, just in case you're going for more of an industrial sort of look. So really emphasizing those sharper corners just by using the wooden rib to produce a clean break where all of these angles meet. Again, just using the trimming tool to take a bit away from that corner. Cleaning hands off, slowing the wheel right down. Chopping through. And up and off onto a tile. And there you have it. So three slightly different variations on bottle forms from one pound of clay. As we've seen, there are a lot of different slight tweaks to the forms that can be made uh, to get them to a style that suits you. But that's it for now. As always, do please check out our other videos, uh, subscribe, share as widely as possible, all of that kind of thing. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.